What's up, game players? How are you guys doing? I'd like to welcome you guys to the Analog Circle Podcast, episode number 78. I'm your host, Keon Mitchell, and as always, thank you guys for tuning in to another week of the Analog Circle Podcast. Now, I want you guys to know this, that if this is your first time listening to the podcast, this is the podcast, the gaming podcast, where gamers have a voice. So if you have some things on your mind that you want to talk about, that you want to put out there in the atmosphere, you can do that two different ways, brother or sister. You can do it either by calling the hotline at 443-261-4607, or you can leave an email at the Analog Circle Podcast at gmail.com. Now, guys... Let's get right into it because I don't want to take up too, too much of your time. So guys, we're going to get into the feedback section. And of course, you guys know that this is my favorite part of the podcast. So let's get into what Mr. Cody Clark has sent us this week. Of course, Cody, you hold this section of the podcast down and this is what it sounds like. That is the heartbeat of this section. So let's get into it. Now, the name of Mr. Cody Clark's email is Pagers, Candy Bar Phones, and the Modern Era. He says, so on an off-the-wall set of questions, what else do you end up doing beyond gaming, K? Like you have your profession as a truck driver, and then you have gaming. But are those the things that take up all of your time? I spent a number of years doing live action role playing, but have transitioned a lot of time into hobby brewing. And in parentheses, he writes, not as much as I'd like, but it can be lots of work. And making a bad, lame batch of beer really bruises your ego, let me tell you. He continues, Goose and I have spent hundreds of hours at our local coffee donut joint talking crap, drinking hot brown and venting venting about games or whatever. I used to spend a lot more time doing video games than other stuff. I mean, Magic the Gathering was a major focus for a long time. And Hero Clicks away back in the day tabletop. D&D was a big deal, but not so much. Being an old man on the mountain makes it hard to schedule time with other friends to use our free time for, you know, free time. I wish I had more mental focus to go learn to program, even just simple things. And as I make t-shirts on computers all day, I really don't. Want to use a computer when I'm at home. When I worked at EA, I didn't want to game once I got home and stopped most of the MMOs I played. New job, much the same. All this sitting in front of a Mac, I don't want to do art when I get home. I just realized I didn't even register stuff that I do spend a lot of time doing. Watching tons of anime and even more random videos on YouTube. It has become so mutane that I didn't even think of it as a method I spend my time on. Jeez, 20 years ago streaming tons of media on phone probably didn't think that would be how I would spend two, three, or four hours of a day. Listen, Cody Clark, as I tell you every single week, brother, I want to truly thank you for this email. And I love the question that you posed to me. Are there any other hobbies that I'm into outside of gaming? I have to say, brother, when I am not driving, when I'm off, man, let me tell you, I love making music. The tracks that you guys hear on the podcast I, you know, I, I did a little bit of it, you know, took some samples. Let, let's, let's go ahead and keep it real right there. Let's be honest. Some of those are samples, but I love 
tapping out the beat, putting the drums to it, getting it together. So beats and music, that's my thing. Uh, writing a little bit or getting on the microphone, freestyle a little bit. That's always been a lot of fun. I'm not a rapper, not at all, but, uh, you know, I do. Do a little bit of auto tunes. Let me stop playing, man. I just embarrassed myself. But uh, outside of that, I uh, I'm pretty big into anime. Let me tell you something, Cody. Back in the day, man, me and you were the same age. I remember seeing Akira for the first time, brother. The first anime I saw, and oh my. Gosh, the violence, the blood, the nudity, the cursing in the guy dog on cartoon was amazing to 14 year old me. Changed my whole perspective on what a cartoon could be. Outside of that, I started looking at Fist of the North Star, Ninja Scroll, Riding Bean, Ghost in a Shell, the Eight Man, the list goes on and on. So anime is another big thing that I love absolutely enjoy it and since YouTube has been popping up different videos all over the place man it's been something I've enjoyed getting back into outside of anime I uh well this is something I used to do I was big in the comic books at one time but I wasn't a Marvel fan I wasn't a DC fan I wasn't too much of a Valiant fan they were okay I was into image Image comics were the best to me because they had such amazing detail and colors and the shading was outstanding. So I was huge in the comic books at one time, kind of fell out of it a little bit, thinking about getting back into it. But as far as hanging out, let me tell you something, Cody. I love going to festivals, man. Going to the festivals. If it's a beer and wine festival, I love to go. You know, any kind of activities that are fun outside. I went to the German Fest. It's just, look, anything that's a, what would you say, an event, I'm down, man. I'm down for it. You know, if it's, if it's fun. I'm riding shotgun. Remember that, brother. But, uh, Cody, I don't want to dwell on this too much longer, man. But there's so many different things I enjoy. Those are just a few. And, uh, hey, man, let me tell you, we're all getting older, brother. Games do take a back seat. Speaking of back seat, uh, 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 to gaming, I haven't even, and shout out to Goose, man. This is no disrespect, brother. And I really, really apologize for this. Goose, I have not even got a chance to download Monster Hunter, which is as terrible. I know, and I'm so sorry, Goose. I've just been so busy, brother. And I got to shout you out again because, listeners, Goose, also, after I told you guys about what happened in Virginia, he was kind enough to also get me Xbox Live Gold. So, God, dog, Goose. Thank you, brother. Goose, I really appreciate that, man. I promise you I'm going to get into the game. I promise you. I've just been really, really busy running around. Been pretty hectic at work lately. But, uh, guys, look, listen. I've rambled, and that's what I do, unfortunately. My mistake. But, guys, let's go ahead since we are. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Before I get into the show, I also, I got to tell you guys this. Cody, one other thing that I love, man, that I'm into is ASMR. I love ASMR. When they make the noises, the. Man, that stuff is amazing, brother. And they just start talking very soft. Man, that stuff is dope. I'm going to tell you guys, if you have not tried ASMR and you are a person who has a nervous energy or you're a person that, 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 that can't go to sleep at night, try that on for size. That is amazing. You got to do it with headphones, though. Make sure you got your headphones on. Go to YouTube. Look up ASMR. And it's a ton of ASMR artists out there. Man, I love that stuff. But uh guys, let's go ahead now because I'm really, really going on too far with this. But let's get and two, what we all come here for, people, and that is for the gaming news 
That went down. We're going to start it off with, uh, let's see what we got here, man. Let's start it off with some huge news. Now, it has been confirmed by Rockstar that Red Dead Redemption will release on October 26th. Now, initially, the game was slated for spring release, but of course, it was delayed. Now, speaking on the delay, Rockstar had this to say, and I quote, We apologize to everyone disappointed by this delay. While we had hoped to have the game out sooner, we require a little extra time for the polish. They continued to say, we look forward to sharing a lot more information with you in the coming weeks. End of quote. Hey guys, all I can say is, man, I'm excited about this. I'm happy that finally we do have a concrete date and it's going to be an amazing ride, guys. This is going to be wonderful. Red Dead Redemption 2. Man, what more can you say? Moving on to the next story. Now, Nintendo has made another very interesting announcement via Twitter by saying, and I quote, the checkered flag has been raised and the finish line is near. A new mobile application is now in development. Mario Kart Tour releasing fiscal year ending in March 2019. Now, people, we've seen Nintendo actually take this mobile, this mobile, uh, what would you call it, situation head on, putting Mario on the platform, putting Animal Crossing on the platform. Now, Mario Kart is going to be on the platform as well. It has to be lucrative. So, I'm, you know, it's not too much more to say about this. I'm actually kind of looking forward to it, seeing how well it will do. And with the with the infrastructure of mobile phones, I'm sure you'll be able to link up with a friend and do a race. This could be wonderful, but we will see how it all comes out in the wash. Moving on into some more Nintendo news. Now, it is being reported that the Nintendo Switch Online service will be released in September. Now, this is according to Thumbsticks. Now, as far as pricing for the service goes, for one year, It'll cost $20. For three months, it'll cost $8. And for a month, it will cost $4. Now, some of the alleged perks of this service will include access to a library of classic games, as well as receiving special deals on certain things on the eShop. Now, I got to tell you guys, for 20 bucks a year... I mean, God, dog, I don't think you can really complain about that. Even if you don't even want to go in long term and you just want to try it out, $4 for a month? Man, they have the most cheap, that might have been poor grammar, but they have the cheapest rate out there for online. And I know it's probably not going to be on the same, ah, that same wavelength as, PlayStation, well, play, PSN, PlayStation Network, or Xbox Live, but I think it'll be good enough. Hey, I'm going to tell you guys something. For 20 bucks a year, if Nintendo makes it so you have access to their classic library of games going all the way back to the Nintendo and all the way up to, let's just say, even the Nintendo 64, that is a gigantic catalog of games to choose from so for me personally it would be worth it just for that perk i'm pretty happy about this i don't think it's much more to say on this let's move on to the next story now and Sony News, you know what? I'm just realizing a lot of this stuff is old. But don't worry, though, guys. Don't you worry. I got some newer stuff in these notes. But let's keep on moving. Now, so uh, not Sony, but Sonic has made some pretty good waves lately. And it looks like the Blue Hedgehog isn't done because there is going to be a panel on March 16th from 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. 
at the Austin Convention Center to talk about what's next for the fast running blue bandit. Now, some of the people that will be there are Sonic Team lead. Uh, his name is Takashi. Man, I'm a butcher this guy's name. It's Zuka. I think I did it. It's Zuka. It's going to be a uh, Sonic Mania animation director, Tyson Hesse, and social media manager, Aaron Weber, to name a few. So if you are a Sonic fan, I think it's safe to say that Sonic has made a pretty good triumphant comeback. He's come back from the daggone leaves and fatigues and made it back up to the ladder. He was burnt up. He was scarred. He was bleeding. People didn't think he would be able to make a clean comeback and it looks like he's done that with Sonic Mania. So for anybody that is interested in Sonic, you make sure that you watch out for this day. That's going to be once again March 16th. Moving on to the next situation at hand, which is Sony. Oh, Sony, you son of a gun. Man. In Sony news, Kaz Harai is stepping down. Now, uh, 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 Sony, who is a Sony CEO, and has this to say. Kaz Harai had this to say, and I quote, To this end, I have dedicated myself to transforming the company and enhancing its profitability. And am very proud that... Now, in the third and final year of our current mid-range corporate plan, we are expected to exceed our financial targets, and it excites me to hear more and more people enthused that Sony is back. End of quote. Now, his replacement is Sony CFO. Oh, uh, man, here we go with the name, brother. Ken Richo. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me get it together, man. Ken Chiro. Ha ha. Yoshida. He's going to be beginning his duties on April 1st. Now, this is fresh off. We got to remember this. This is fresh off of Andrew House retiring as well. So it looks like it's just being a change of the guard. Some people are saying, oh my gosh, Sony is in trouble. All of these people are leaving. Naughty Dog has people that are leaving. All of these exact CEOs are leaving. Listen, man, listen, everybody retires eventually. Everybody wants to go down to Miami and golf at some point in their later years. I mean, God dog, what are you supposed to work your whole life? Look, Kazara, he left Sony in a good position. They're doing amazing right now. It's a great time to bow out and leave and say that is part of my legacy. I left that behind. I helped do that. So for Kazara, I say congratulations, buddy. You have made it out unscathed. You didn't get fired. You were able to help bring Sony back to the to the front of the pack. And I really hope you enjoy your retirement, buddy. Moving on into... Oh, by the way, by the way, I want to clear this up too. Kaz will be on the chairman board. So... He's semi-retiring, a couple of things that need to be cleared. He'll be on the board to clear those things. But, uh, yeah, moving on. Now, in the rumor verse, oh, this is so rumor, it's peculiar. All right, some Call of Duty news has been released by a supposed insider by the name of Marcus Sellers. Now, we all know everybody's an insider. Everybody's a mole nowadays. So, like I tell you guys all the time, take this with the mustard seed of truth. Okay, now, according to him, the next Call of Duty will be Black Ops 4. Now, it's going to take place in modern times. Oh, 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 and will feature boots on the ground gameplay. So, no jetpacks will be used if this is, of course, true. And it will be released. Now, this is a daggone kick. This is a kick right here. They're saying it's going to be released on the Nintendo Switch. Which is, whoo, that would be something else. Let me tell you something. The Switch is doing absolutely amazing. I mean, it's incredible. They've already outsold the Wii U 
in what 10 months so i mean hey if you can get extra money you do what you got to do activision you put it on the guy dog on switch and go ahead and watch those numbers raise way up in the air it's not much more to say about this i just belched excuse me guys but uh you know we'll see if this is all true if so, it'll be very interesting. Boots on the ground, modern times, or well, modern day, interesting. Let's see what happens in the future. Moving on, now this is in a quick story. Uh, this is just quick story news. Uh, Demon Souls online servers will be shut down by February 28th. And uh, the game came out in 2009. So it had basically, what's that, a nine-year run? Ah, man, hey. R.I.P. Man, a lot of people love the game. Some people hated the game. Some people threw their controller at the TV screen when they played it. I heard it was frustrating. Moving on now for Yakuza. Oh my goodness, man! This is a game that just strikes me all of a sudden, man. But for Yakuza fans, I have good and bad news for you guys. Now, the bad news, I, I have to tell you this, is the game has been delayed from March 20th to April 17th. That's going to be the new release date. But the good news is there will be a demo available on February 27th. So if you have a PlayStation 4, I suggest Please try this out. This is Yakuza 6, the song of life. Oh, oh, oh. man, let's sing something. It's the song of life. The song of life. Let me stop playing, man. I don't know what's wrong with me tonight. Anyway, let's move on. That was also horrible. But uh, I got to tell you guys really quick about... uh. Yakuza. The reason why I have been very interested in this game is because a couple of months back, I was telling you guys about the Fist of the North Star game that was coming out that looked sensational. Oh my gosh! This game looks just like the animated I saw when I was 15. I mean, it looks great. I mean, Ken is looking, looking like Ken, brother. I mean, this is looking real official. Jago is looking like Jago. Ray is looking like Ray. I mean, it looks just like the anime. So when I found out that Sega actually was doing this game and it's the same team that's behind Yakuza, it really, really piqued my interest. So I'm hoping that this game is great. I'm going to give Yakuza a try. I'm going to import uh, uh, Fist of, of the North Star because it is no U.S. release date right now. And, uh, yeah, since it's no region locks on the PlayStation 4, oh, I am importing that. Moving on. Now, back to some Nintendo news. It's been said by Nintendo president Tetsume Kimashima that he wants to carry on selling the Switch for more than just the average five to six year console cycle. Now, to me, I have to tell you guys, this makes perfect sense. Now, you guys may say, well, how the world could you say that? It's already, you know, dated, outdated software or hardware. How could this even be an option? I'll tell you why and how. Because the Switch is a portable console. It's not just a console. It's portable, which means it is in the same league as the 3DS. And the 3DS has been going pretty strong for seven years. It's just starting to take a decline. So when you think about the Switch, them wanting to have it go past that five to six year mark, I think it's very, very plausible and possible that this could happen and it would still get great content. So this doesn't necessarily mean also in my mind that they're going to stop with the switch. Another console could be coming out in the next two or three years. I mean, that might be a little too soon, but this is all speculation. It could be another console to come out, which means the Switch is going to drop in price, which means more people are going to gravitate to it, which means it can extend the life out longer. So even if Nintendo does put a newer, better 
quote unquote switch or whatever kind of system they go with, they also have that cheaper option with the, the, the switch. So did that come out right? Man, I feel like I didn't say that right. But anyway, I'm a, I'm a roll with it. But I, you know, that is nothing more to say about this. Look, Nintendo, you're winning. You're doing great. Keep doing your thing. And please, please, please stay the course. Moving on, guys. Now into some Overwatch news. Now the next seasonal event. Haha, <laughs> I messed up on that seasonal. Let's say that. Seasonal event has been announced. Now the Lunar New Year event comes to PC, PS4, and Xbox One on February 8th. Oh, that is tomorrow. Now, Blizzard said this in a tweet, and I quote, Wishing you prosperity in the year of the dog. This isn't the first lunar event. Last year was the year of the rooster, cock doodle do mother lovers, which added new skins. So I'm sure, I mean, I'm pretty sure you can expect the same with this. Now, game director Jeff Kaplan said this, and I quote, pretty significant content that players are going to be very happy with. So you Overwatch players, get ready. It's the year of the dog roof roof. Speaking of the dogs, man, did y'all see that Philly game, brother? Did y'all see that Super Bowl? Did you see it? The underdogs, brother. I couldn't believe it. You couldn't have paid me to dag on bet on Philly to win that game. I'm dead serious. I did not think they were going to do it. And my goodness, they did it. Amazing game. I mean, hey, Brady, you lost, man. Hey, what's, what's a loss out of five? You got five rings, man. Five championships. Brady, you need to relax and calm down. Enjoy your life. Moving on, no shit. Now, some more games have been added to Game Pass, including Fable Anniversary, Halo Wars 2, NBA uh, 2K17, WWE 2K17, Darksiders 2, Death Definitive Edition, Rhyme, Riptide Renegade GP, Letter, Qu and also, what's the last one? Letter Quest Grimm's Journey. My goodness, li listen, listen. Microsoft, they keep on making this Game Pass better and better. I'm not saying all of these are super hitters and games that you're going to want to go out and get the service for, but my goodness, you got to admit, Halo Wars 2, that's still relatively kind of new. Is it really? Not really, but um, you know what I'm saying. Uh, These aren't bad. I mean, hey, $10 a month. You get access to these games. Rhyme is relatively new. Hey, anyway, man, look, I'm rambling. Not much more to say about this. Let's move on to the next thing. Well, wait a minute. There's one more thing to say about this. This shows that Microsoft is committed to getting the games into Game Pass. That's Ryan. I mean, hey, I give him a lot of credit, man. $10 for someone that's a casual fan that doesn't necessarily want to pick up a game Every single month when a new one comes out that wants to get on the sticks, play a couple games, and then go on with their day, I think this is excellent. For the kid that doesn't have a lot of money, like I've said before, this is a great service for a parent to say, hey, look, hey, look, little Joey, okay, you're doing great in school, pal. I want to award you. So I'm going to go ahead and get you this, this game pass, all right? And you're going to have a great time. I think it's great. Anyway, man, I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. Let's just move on to the next darn story. Now, and more Sony news. Now, it looks like an apparent leak of a new limited edition PlayStation 4 Pro God of War bundle has been allegedly revealed on a Bul uh, I know this word, Bulgar uh, Bulgarian <laughs> dog retailer's website, but since has been taken down yet and still there has been no official word from Sony about this. Look, I saw the, I saw the so-called mock-up box 
art for this thing, okay? The box art looked pretty nice, buddy. I really liked it. I said, hey, I think this would be excellent if they brought this over to the States. I don't know if it's going to happen. We'll have to see. But I think that would sell like gangbusters. Uh, a God of War themed console, PlayStation 4, maybe put the limited edition in there. That would be awesome. And it's supposed to be a pro um, good gosh. I mean, how could you, how could you not be tempted to get something like that? But we'll see if that actually comes to fruition because it was a time I thought that the Gran Turismo bundle was going to come over here to the States, but it didn't. It stayed overseas. So we'll have to see what happens with that. Now, just in a quick, another quick news story, PlayStation 4. God dog. Like I said, Kaz Harai has done his job. Okay. They have just hit 76 million consoles sold 76 million i mean can you believe it they've been out since 2013 this is the fifth year which in all fairness makes me believe I'm trying to get my bearings together y'all it makes me believe that they are in no hurry no rush i mean not even a little bit to get to the next PlayStation. Everybody that's on the other side that loves Sony, that's ponying it up, man. <laughs> that was a terrible uh, uh, daggone um, impersonation of a horse. But, you know, people that are trying to tell Sony, hey, you need to come out with the PlayStation 5 to combat the Xbox One X. Let me tell you something, man. I mean, God, dog, I'm a big Xbox fan. I love the Xbox brand. It's my, it's my, platform of choice even though i have all three actually it's my platform of choice and i'm gonna tell you it is no way microsoft is going to even come close to catching sony 76 million versus i don't know maybe 40 million maybe 40 I, and i might be pushing it but it might be 40 by this point but it's no way. So Sony has no incentive to rush out to the market to go ahead and green light another console in 2019. I just don't see it. I think they're going to ride this out until the numbers show otherwise. I think once the numbers start really taking a severe dip, then maybe, just maybe Sony will say, okay, we got to get back on our square. We got to get ready to get back to work and go ahead and get a new system out here. Now, maybe I could be wrong, but if I'm winning and I have money coming in hand over fist and my competition is a distant second, I'm not rushing. I'm, I'm walking to the beat of my own drum, son. Okay, I'm not worried about what you're doing. I'm going to do what I want to do. And right now, Sony is in the daggone driver's seat, man. They are driving the heck out the car, and they are lapping Microsoft at this point. Well, maybe not lapping them. I might be doing a little too much. But we'll see what happens with this. But um, congratulations. That's a huge number. Moving on into some E3 news. This is really good news, man. Now, tickets are on sale for the event on February 12th. If you were thinking about going to E3, let me repeat that. The tickets will be going on sale on February 12th. And for the first 1,000 tickets, it will be sold for $150. So if you can be the... F man, why am I repeating myself? Y'all heard it, man. Shoot. Y'all daggone very intelligent out there. Let me stop doing that. Now, after that, Tickets will cost $250. Now, the tickets will grant you, if you're wondering what do you get, what kind of access will you get, you will get three days of access to the show, which starts June 12th through the 14th. Got to take those days off of work. Now, the first day, uh, the public is allowed in from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. June 13th, you'll be invited in from 12 p.m. until 7 p.m. And the final day, you'll be invited in from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. So this is, I mean, they're giving you quite a few hours. And also what I've read with this is they're actually giving people that are media a three-hour buffer 
to actually go in, do their job, play their games, get the interviews done that they need to get done, which is great because, I mean, I hear certain podcasts that are much bigger than me, and they talk about how hard it was to get through with the crowds of people there and how hard it was to get to their appointments and get the hands-on time with the games. So hopefully this three-hour buffer, which... Ah, man, in hindsight, it just doesn't seem like it's going to be enough time, but at least it's more than what they gave them last year to get their job done. So hopefully this helps with that situation. And once again, if you guys are interested, just try to be within that first 1000 to get a $100. That's a pretty big value, $100 off of the tickets to this year's E3. It's going to be sensational. Moving on, now another quick news story. Now, beginning February 20th, Microsoft will be offering, and this is really cool, they're going to be offering a PUBG bundle, including the Xbox One S, which will also come with a month of Xbox Live Gold and a month of Game Pass. And the price for this bundle is going to be $300. So you guys remember that over the Christmas or the holiday season, they were actually selling the X with PUBG in the box. Now, I think it makes a lot more sense. Well, not a lot more sense, but I think it makes sense that Microsoft will also pack in one, one of their hottest games of, of this console generation, selling 4 million copies. That is incredible. Now, you can chalk it up to the game just having such a huge buzz on the PC, or you could chalk it up to the game being $30. Either way, it's a hot game right now. Over $4 million. I don't think Rise did that. I don't think Sunset did that. And we can just keep going with the list. But anyway point of this is if you are interested in PUBG trying to get in on the ground floor well I don't know how much of a ground floor it's going to be now but $300 for S versus $500 for X for that person that just wants to play the games and isn't worried about power isn't worried about resolution isn't worried about frames per second per se then this is a good deal $300 Moving on. Also, man, you get Game Pass for 30 days. It's pretty dope. Moving on to the next story. Now, there are some new features rumored. I, God dang, why didn't I bring this up earlier? Shucks. Drop the ball on this one, people. But we're getting back to Red Dead Redemption. Some news that actually come out about some of the so-called features now this is once again these are rumors not 100 percent accurate but this is what people are saying are in the game these features so it'll feature at least two online modes which are going to be called revive and survive and money grab it will also feature a first person mode which is that's interesting dual wielding in the wild west in first person mode, oh man, I guess they're doing kind of what they did with GTA 5. That's, that could be kind of cool. Uh, it will also, well, not that, but it will, um, yeah, actually, yeah, it will come with a companion app which will feature a poker mini game where it will link to your character to make money gambling against other people. Now, this is pretty. T-Dog on Smart. Now, see, Rockstar is about to finesse everybody, okay? If you're not, if you're not aware, if you are not wide awake, buddy, they are going, I can see this being a big finesse. You buy coins or you get tokens or dollars or whatever you want to call it, Rockstar money or something, and you got an app on your phone. You got an app. Okay, you're going to say, hey, man, look, I'm down a couple dollars. I want to get a, I don't know, that, that, that nice, shiny Clydesdale horse over there. Okay, I need that to ride. Okay, I'm tired of riding this donkey. I want to get, you know, I want to upgrade my hooves a little bit, you know. And you go ahead and you take this app and people are gambling and you're like, hey, Rockstar's like, well, you need virtual money. So go ahead and buy this, like I said, Red Dead uh, pack of I don't know, uh, money. 
God dog it, I can't come up with anything better. You get the money, you got the chance of gambling, doubling your money, tripling your money, all for the sake of getting your character bigger and better things in the virtual world. This is, man, look, if they do it right, this could be a whole nother thing. And the thing is that if Rockstar, if they mask it good enough, and I mean, you got to do a whole lot of masking on this joint, they could get away with it like robbers robbing a bank and nobody will look twice. So we'll see even if this is a real feature or not. None of this is confirmed, but this is what the report is saying. Also, moving on from that, as far as the campaign goes, it will have now I thought this was very very interesting. It's actually going to have morality choices which are similar of course to Mass Effect where certain things that you'll do in the world, they will have consequences. That is so interesting just to think about what you could possibly get into. What are the what, what are the ramifications of the actions of this posse? You know, could you could you mess around, make the wrong decision, and one of your guys from the posse gets shot and killed, and you got to deal with the guilt? I mean, Rockstar, we know Rockstar makes some of the best. I mean, absolute best storylines in gaming. They are on that top tier. That top pedigree of talented studios that are bar none in my opinion they are top three easy top three i already said who my top three were but i'll name them again it would be rockstar it would be naughty dog and i would have to say even though they have stumbled and I mean, man, some people say they have stumbled badly. I would still put BioWare up there. Those are the top three developers, in my opinion. And Rockstar with their their stories, just play Max Payne 3 and tell me that story wasn't amazing. Incredible. I mean, that that game took some twists, turns, and made it burn in a whole different way people that I didn't think things were going to happen to it happened to and it happened kind of early on Max Payne 3 a highly underrated title from Rockstar I don't know why so many people disliked it I love that game but anyway I'm rambling again my bad guys moving on into some CD Projekt news oh man oh man listen to this man this is this is this is Oh, this is interesting news. Let me tell you, make you want to holler. Listen to this. Now, it looks like due to the updated E3 website. Now, this is all updated, man. Oh, shucks. The show's participating companies for this year's E3 has CD Project Red on the card. Now, you know my mind. You know where it had to go, brother. It went to the game Cyberpunk 2077, which I had also read. I didn't even include this in the notes because it was so it was so vague. I didn't think it was worth reporting on. But what I read was that they are just going for and of course this is gonna sound just like yeah, no 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 duh, Keon. Of course they are, but they said that they are trying to push the boundaries of realism and and just the details that they were going into just the you know skin texture and the eyes and you know just really trying to make this thing look just astonishing and i mean if anybody has played the witcher 3 you know that game is amazing the environments the way the trees just just kind of blow in the wind the game is amazing so i'm just so excited to 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 hear that they're gonna be at e3 which makes me believe and i'm just hoping i'm hoping i'm hoping cd project red if you're hearing this please show up on a stage i don't care whose stage it is i don't care if it's sony's i don't care if it's microsoft's i just want you guys to show up on the stage at e3 this year and show this game off they've been working on this game for five plus years so it would be great to see them there 
at the daggone stage at E3. And I hope they're not just doing some business deals because that happens too, where they could just be talking to press about the game with nothing to show. But hopefully they'll be showing something off. Also, just really quickly, just going through the list, uh, of course, Microsoft is going to be there, Sony, Sega, but they also said that Take Two is going to be there, which, of course, we know who's under the Take Two umbrella is Rockstar. Now, we know Rockstar doesn't do E3. We know they don't need to. They're bigger than E3. They sent a tweet out. They sent something out on Facebook. I mean, it's all a blaze. I mean, good gosh. They put it on YouTube. It gets 4 million views. I mean, they, they don't need any real publicity or a big stage. They already have that within themselves. But I couldn't help but to think that if the rumors were true from last year, that Red Dead Redemption was supposed to, quote unquote, has shown up on Sony's stage at the end. If because of the unfortunate situation that happened last year with the shooting, oh man, God be with those people's families, uh, that, uh, man, I know still affected, but, um, you know, from, from them not wanting to show that kind of violent imagery because the timing wasn't right. I just think that, man, what if this year, they, man, they come back on the Sony stage and they show off this game. Real gameplay. Forget the diaries and all of the buildup that Rockstar does. What if they put it all on the line at this year's E3 and they let you see what the game is? Do a nice Five minute demo, maybe seven minutes. Sony lets you go for 20 minutes, seems like if you want to, but that's going to shut it down because that game is coming out in October, which is well past E3. So I would, man, it would, you know what? This would be an amazing scenario. What if, because you know, Microsoft already knows that Sony has that deal. What if, and, and, and this is why I keep going back to this. Microsoft knows they need a showstopper because Rockstar's Red Dead Redemption is going to be that for PlayStation. I have no doubt. Yes, it is coming to the, the, the Xbox, and I know it doesn't carry the same weight as an exclusive would. But, of course, they're going to have exclusive content. It's going to be seen on their stage first. That's awesome. What if Microsoft, like I said, Cyberpunk 2077 on the stage, man, who the world would win that one? I mean, good grief. Rockstar, of course, Cyberpunk isn't coming out this year, but that's just me speculating. I've spent way too much time on this. Let's move on, God dog it. But um, yeah, hope to see you there, CD Project Red. Do you think, baby? All right. Now, Google. Now, this is very. This is left field, like no doubt. Uh, Google is in the news, man. And it looks like they could be taking the plunge into, listen to this, into a gaming streaming service under code name Yeti, which could potentially run on Chromecast or a new console that the company could be working on. I mean, after all, I mean, just think about it. After all, okay, they did hire Mr. Phil Harrison. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with Phil Harrison, he actually worked for Microsoft and he ran PlayStation's first party studio. So with a guy like Phil Harrison in place, man, this could be possible. Could Google actually have the Gajones? Okay, to actually come to the market with a console. I really, I really doubt that. I'm be honest. I don't think they're going to do that. But the Chromecast thing, that makes it very interesting. Them having this streaming service, I'm telling you, that's going to be a sad day for me as a gamer, as a, as an old school game player too, to, see that these games are no longer going to be physical. It's not going to be really anything physically to collect because eventually it's going to happen. I mean, 
the writing is well on the wall. I mean, who is it? Best Buy is going to stop carrying CDs, and so is Target. And that's later on this year, I think maybe in June sometime. I know it's very, very soon. So with them doing that, man, it's just a matter of time before the media format that we know is gaming is going to go the same way. It may take a couple of years. I'm not saying it's going to happen in the next three to five years, but this is the, this is going to be the wave eventually. So ah, we'll see. But Google, man, it's interesting. It's getting very, very interesting. They want to get a little bit of that billion dollar industry money as well. So we'll see what happens with this story. But Moving on to the final story of this week's podcast, Blue Point, the studio behind the remake of Shadow of the Colossus. Oh, yeah, people are saying this is the greatest remake ever in the history of gaming dumb. Okay, they're saying this this thing is broken boundaries and it, they they've done amazing stuff. This is just what people are saying. I don't know how true it is. I have to pick it up. But it's these guys. They've also done Uncharted 1, 2, and 3, the remake of that, and they've done the God of War collection, which they have actually done great work on these. They really have. I had the God of War, not the collection, but I did have the, the third one that they did. So it was good. It was really good. They remade it nice, cleaned it up. And, um, I mean, good God, Shadow of the Colossus, goodness gracious. That game does look amazing. But let me get to the point. Oh, man. Uh, let's see. Um, they just announced, and I quote, now this is a quote. This is the quote from, uh, Blue Point. It says, the Blue Point team is preparing for our next remake of a classic. Want to be part of the creating uh, uh, I'm sorry, want to be part of creating something special, a game millions of gamers are eagerly anticipating, eagerly anticipating. So guys, they are back at it again. Blue Point is hinting that they're going to be remaking a game that millions, millions of gamers are eagerly anticipating. What could this game possibly be? I mean, I'm going through my mental roller decks and I'm like, oh man, I mean, Crash is out there. Because we know Blue Point, they've, they usually have only done work with Sony. All of the games that were named, we all know they're on the Sony platform. So I can't imagine them doing anything for Nintendo or Microsoft. So it has to be a Sony game. Now, when I thought about millions upon millions of gamers, it's a few games that do come to mind on the PlayStation brand. One of those is SOCOM. That got a lot of buzz back in the day. It was a great game. Unfortunately, the last one they made kind of soiled the name of that franchise. So I don't know if that could be it. But also you have the other game, Siphon Filter, which people have been clamoring for that for years on top of years. And nothing has been done about it. So, I mean, those are the only two that are coming to my mind. They've had, man, Sony has had a gang load of these games that have been out on their platform. So I'm interested in knowing what this game could be. Matter of fact, I mean, hey, man, shucks. You know what? <laughs> what do you think it is? What game do you think Blue Point is working on that millions of gamers are looking to see this remake from? Uh, you know what, man? That That's going to be the... No, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. But am I going to do that? I don't know. We're going to come back to this. But anyway, that is the end of the gaming news this week. But you guys stay tuned because we will be right back after this week's video game theater. Stay tuned, guys. Cigar. Connecting oxygen hose to interior connector. Put on your mask. Does this pee?
Kenny Ways know what he's doing? Approaching release point. Ten minutes to drop off. Hey, are you deaf? He said put out the cigar and put on your mask. Depressurization complete. Checking oxygen supply. Six minutes to drop off. Opening rear hatch. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back, guys. Now, listen, we are in the final section of the podcast. And, of course, every week I ask you guys a question at the end of the show. And this week is no different. Now, this question I have to ask, it's pertaining to the story Polygon had had running. Now, this is not confirmed. I don't believe this is happening But if it were, this is really a what if situation. If Microsoft could buy EA, could they afford it? Okay, that's the question. Could Microsoft afford to buy EA? I mean, it's a $20 billion plus company. Microsoft is, I think, honing in on $100 billion. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. But would this be feasible? I truly don't don't think that Microsoft should buy EA. I think that they should buy some of their IPs or some of their studios. I would love for them to buy Dead Space. I would love for them to get the rights to another Knights of the Old Republic or even just buy BioWare. I mean, that would be amazing. I think that that would be a great talent for them. Um Even, well, we know that the Titanfall creators, uh, who is that, Respawn, they just signed to EA, so I don't think Microsoft could even get them. But that is my question for you guys this week. Could Microsoft afford to buy EA? I want to thank you guys, like I say, all the time, man, and that's just because I really do mean it. Thank you guys for tuning in to another week of the Analog Circle Podcast, and we will definitely be back next week. But remember this before we go. It's not about the consoles, man. It's about the games, brother. So you guys take care. Be safe out there. Bye-bye.